About his letter Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis said, In this reflection on the fraternity of all people, I have been inspired especially by Francis of Assisi, but also by non-Catholic brothers, Martin Luther King, Desmond Tutu, Mahatma Gandhi and many others. Today we are talking again about the encyclical Fratelli Tutti, which was presented a few weeks ago at the United Nations in Geneva, a paper which is praised and appreciated also by non-Catholics. Priest Professor Dr. Johann Sorka, the Interim General Secretary of the World Council of Churches in Geneva, went one step further in his assessment of Fratelli Tutti. If the teaching at the end of uh, this encyclical are Catholics, then the Pope is perfectly Orthodox, or I am perfectly Catholic. What we have in common, we now learn in my conversation with Father Sokka, here in EWTN UN blog. In 2020, Pope Francis said during an audience at the Vatican, We are all one, whether Protestant or Orthodox. It is important to recognize other Christians as our true brothers and sisters in Christ. As the World Council of Churches put it in 1969, Judaism, Christianity and Islam not only belong together historically, they speak of the same God, Creator, Revealer and Judge. I now welcome in Geneva Father Johann Sorka of the World Council of Churches. Good afternoon, Father. Good afternoon, Christian. What moved an Orthodox Christian like you to read a letter from the Pope? Well, I have two answers to your question, Christian. First, you know, I am uh, also a professor of ecumenical theology, so, and also acting general secretary. So from these positions, I have to know what other Christians are saying. But secondly, as an Orthodox faithful Christian, I was very much import, uh, interested in reading this letter because it resonates with my faith. It's the very core of our faith, what is said in this Fratelli Tutti. The participants of the online event of the Fratelli Tutti presentation, initiated by the Holy See and the Order of Malta, consisted of a mixture especially of representatives of non-religious organizations, such as the UN, International Red Cross, Labour Organization, World Health Organization. So it was a colorful mix. Why was it important for you to participate? Well, for me, uh, it was very important to take part in this meeting. Because apart from the Cardinal Ayuso, which was from the Roman Catholic Church, we also had a Muslim and uh, a Jewish rabbi participating in the debate. And it was very interesting to exchange views on how do we see from our faith perspective the uh, human fraternity in the world and what can we do together to advance for making peace and living together? So I hope that uh, after this meeting, we can continue our exchange of views, not only with high-level people, but each of us uh, will uh, work in, its own con in his or her own congregation to educate our people in the line of what has been discussed and in the direction of the expressions of Fratelli Tutti. The World Council of Churches, WCC, headquartered in Geneva, is a fellowship of 350 churches from more than 110 countries, representing over 500 million Christians worldwide. While the Catholic Church is not a member, she has been part of a joint working group of the WCC since 1965. In 2018, Pope Francis visited the World Council of Churches in Geneva to participate in their 17th anniversary celebration. Father Johann, Fratelli Tutti ultimately reflects the values and teachings of the Catholic Church. 
Many of these teachings are different from the teachings of your religious denomination, and yet you indirectly support this letter and the content of Pope Francis. Christian, um, if the teaching at the end of uh, this encyclical are Catholics, then the Pope is perfectly Orthodox, or I am perfectly Catholic. Because what I see, we share completely, 100%, all of them together. This is the heart of our Christian theology. God in Christ had a purpose for the whole world. Christ, as God's expression of love incarnated, is called the new Adam. In the Adam of humanity, it means that all those who have flesh are brothers and sisters the way we see the world to the perspective of our faith. Secondly, what uh, His Holiness the Pope refers to are the sources of our common Christian faith. He starts with Francis of Assisi. He quotes from Augustine. He quotes from St. Basil the Great. He quotes from Irenaeus of Lugdunum. Sorry, these are our also saints. We share things together. We can say things together and we can find one another as expressing the same faith on common values, especially when we speak about uh, a common humanity or a human family to which we all belong together. I would go even further. On the basis of this, as you say, Catholic values, uh, His Holiness Pope Francis was able to sign, as you know, um, a document on human fraternity for world peace and living together with the Grand Imam of uh, Al-Azhar in Egypt. There are certain values which all religions share, and especially the Abrahamic religions. We all say that we have one creator and whole humanity belongs together as brothers and sisters created by God. In Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis records blessed brother Charles of Jesus. The letter asks a friend, pray to God that I may truly be the brother of all souls. He ultimately wanted to be the brother of all. But only by identifying with the least of these did he become the brother of all. In our new world environment behind masks, social distancing and closures, what can faith-based organizations like yours accomplish in terms of worldwide brotherhood in this restrictive world? Well, I will answer you from my point of view as a faith person. I think can achieve a lot. Because what we realize in our time, the younger generation, they may not be religious, but they are very spiritual. And they are looking for spirituality. And they are looking for, for values. And the values which faith communities are uh, conveying are resonating very much with the younger generation. Secondly, I see now that the secular organization like United Nations or uh, UNESCO and uh, uh, UNICEF and many others, uh, ILO, come to us and say, can we work together? Because you are present in every single locality or parish. You have the infrastructure. How can we cooperate to implement our common values? So if we work together, faith communities have a lot to contribute and to offer to the world in implementing these values which have been expressed in the encyclical Fratelli Tutti. I would like to conclude by asking you to extend blessings to our viewers, readers and listeners. So, dear sisters and brothers, some of us celebrated Easter. Some others are preparing to celebrate Easter. So, from the heart of the World Council of Churches in Geneva, which is an organization composed of 350 churches, from 120 countries with more than 550 million people. I would like to address to you and to convey to you our prayers for God's blessing and that the light of the risen Christ may enlighten your ways and the blessings and the joy of resurrection may come to give you comfort and relief 
and hope in this situation created by the COVID-19. May God bless you and may God bless us. Please pray for us. Christ is risen. On the subject of ecumenism, a fitting quote comes to mind from Ms. Haferkamp of the publishing group Bistum Presse in Hildesheim in Germany. Quote, yes, we all believe in the same God, because there is only one.